Um, now it's my turn to say a few words about the concept of spatialization. Um, and this is a process in which actors or groups of actors construct a claim or also name a space for themselves, uh, for instance, to perform rituals there, hold events or trade. This spatialization of social, religious or other groups indicates at least a wish, although that's not always successful, but a wish for a more permanent presence as they constitute an attempt to connect this identifiable space uh, with a given group actor or person. Groups can indicate a space as theirs through symbols or rituals, for instance by adding a particular, let's say, religious symbol to a room to indicate that it belongs to them and in this way spatialized. Um, and in these cases the temporal aspects of spatialization are especially important as some of them were short-lived or ephemeral. Spatialization then can be connected to a violent event and violent outburst uh, of, of some kind, but it can also be undertaken in more peaceful or subtle manners. Now, unlike the other three concepts that uh, we've discussed now, spatialization um, doesn't have a clear definition as such, and it's also not linked to any one particular thinker, so an individual who really coined the term as such. Um, rather, it has been applied in a range of different ways and in a range of different languages, um, and in many cases meaning slightly different things, which also means that points of criticism, which we heard about in the other three examples, uh, depend in the case of spatialization on which definition exactly is used. But this open-endedness uh, we would argue makes the concept malleable and easy to connect to other processes such as materialization or temporalization, but also makes it possible to use the concept across a wide geographical and temporal range. Spatialization um, can be considered as a kind of subcategory in this sense in a toolbox of spatial analysis and also a term that is a kind of umbrella concept for other processes that the KFG worked with. For example, placemaking, which we heard about, urbanization, citification, uh, and pairings such as crossing and dwelling, which we will consider further in the coming years. The KFG argues that um, urbanity pen, can be created through processes of spatialization where religious factors and actors play a particularly important role. And in this way, approaching religion and urbanity through this lens of spatializations is also a way to shed new lights on actors, groups and their respective agencies. In urban contexts, the presence of multiple confessions uh, or religions led to conflicts and compromises when it came to these ideas, notions, and attempts at spatializations, for instance, in shared spaces. The presence of a multiplicity of religious symbols, rituals, and actors led to a greater differenti differentiation of these religious groups, but also to exchange, for instance, if we think about processions in dense urban quarters. The focus on spatializations uh, enables questions on religious, religious groups which either could not or did not want to participate in these processes. For instance, if we consider persecuted groups like the early Christians or religious or confessional groups who consciously chose not to participate in these kinds of specializations, normally to stay hidden for some reason. And this in turn can help us understand which religious groups were more or less inclined to specialization and then pose the question why this was the case. So why did some religious groups construct monumental buildings to mark their presence in urban spaces, while others prefer to stay out of sight. Within the context of the KFG, specialization has informed a range of uh, publications, including Emiliano's Poverty Plateau, where he writes about the specialization of urban poverty, 
uh, Supriya Chaudhuri um, in her Spaces of the Sacred Religious Practices in Urban Interstices, um, where she uses it as one of her five key categories, as well as in the programmatic uh, Religion and Urbanity Reciprocal Formations by Jörg Rübke and Susanne Rau. Uh, I have also used these kinds of spatial practices in, in my contribution to the 2021 Moderne Stadtgeschichte, a sort of joint venture in which we explored religion and urbanity in a, 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 in a long-term perspective. So to just say two more sentences about two of these examples. Um, on the left here you can see Munich's Southern Cemetery, um, which is also where or near where the um, Protestant minority uh, was buried, in this case a kind of forced spatialization outside of the city walls, and then gradually as uh, the early modern period progressed in the 17th, 18th centuries, the Protestants were moved into the city walls, claiming spaces within the city walls also for the dead, showing a kind of more permanent presence of this Protestant minority in the urban landscape of Munich. Um, and on the right, you can see an example um, of uh, Shapriya Chaudhary's paper. Um, as I said, it is one of five ways of operating, as she calls it, it. The first one being spatialization, and then sedimentation, obstruction, circulation, and occupation, which she explores uh, regarding Kolkata. Um, and here you can see one of these examples where the different religious groups um, participate in a kind of spatialization in the urban um, in, in the urban environment in order to make their presence felt. Through future uh, foci, the KFG will continue to think about spatialization. For example, one of them, uh, one of these foci which focuses, focuses on mercantilization, the KFG will explore how merchants and traders use spatializations and how this related to the placement of places of worship. For instance, when a bazaar was built in relation to a mosque or church in relation to a major thoroughfare, as was the case as uh, society informed us yesterday on Erfurt's Kremerbrücke with the Egidienkirche, which some of you might know. Or, to name another example, the focus on group formation uh, will show how different groups could claim spaces within the urban context. Now, this just leaves me, I believe, to say thank you very much so far. I think now it's time for a break and the discussion will happen after the break. Five, how, four? Uh, at four we continue. Thank you. Thank you.